What is up, everybody? Welcome into In the Bag, episode 102? 102. 102. Yeah. We are live. Uh, you guys are going to notice that we're in a little bit of a different setup here. Uh, I can look directly at my camera. I don't look too orange because I'm on nice cameras uh, because I'm here at Foundation HQ and I got the boys with me. What's up? Yeah, and we are not in two separate locations or two different rooms. Robbie's right here beside us, but he's right there. <laughs> Brad and I can literally hold hands. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. Jason could if he really. You're making me jealous. I could hold Brad's hand, and by proxy, I'm holding Robbie's hand. If we're all oh, holding that's hands. true. That's we'll, true. we'll avoid that. Well, okay, though. we're all in this together, as they say, and uh, <laughs> we're very. Ex- we we're talking about High School Musical <laughs> before this. That's why I said that. I finally that's watched good. it for whatever reason, but hey, it's okay. Um, we are here together today because we did the third version, third iteration, third battle of the bag draft. Um, I don't remember what exact episode that is. I'll link it in the description when we post this, yeah. but, um, we've done a couple different inter- iterations of the bag draft. The first one, um, remind me what the first one was, gentlemen. First we drafted for me and it was disc. We talked about oh, it. Yeah, from the that we, yeah. yeah. Just that we've referred yeah. to guests on the, on the podcast. And yeah, I've, I drafted for myself, Robbie drafted for Jason. And then, um, we let Jason choose the course blind. Yep. So, because I guess that was fair. <laughs> um, so Jason did well. He uh, smoked me on that one. Uh, second episode, we did a draft, a snake draft. It was Robbie and I again. Um, and one, we did one manufacturer yeah. per or something. One manufacturer per slot yep. in the bag. Yep. Correct. Yep. yep. Um, so that one was kind of interesting. Um, I did win that one. So we were at one, one, and one, and we wanted to do a tiebreaker. Now, am I saying there's only going to be three episodes of this? I don't know. Let us know below. Um, but. Robbie, I'll let you take it over. This this one was an interesting uh, video as well. First time Jason got the draft his bag, which was nice. Yep, he did. And unfortunately, the limitation was I put four discs and we did a nine disc bag draft. But I had basically sets of four going through some of the slots of a balanced bag. Um, or I don't even know. I don't think I, when I planned this, I don't think I like planned it for a too balanced of a bag like when i had the four options it wasn't like oh these are all four overstable fairways it was like Mm -hmm. right here are because even as y'all were playing yesterday i noticed like some differences and there were shots that both of you throughout the round were like i i don't have the disc that Mm -hmm. does this shot but like the other guy ended up having it so uh, I want to go ahead. This contextually for people is going to be dropping. This is dropping Friday. And so next Thursday, the episodes are going to be, or like the round itself is going to be dropping. So we're going to be discussing what happened during all of this. And I was talking with Jason about this last night. I think there's two perspectives to take. Uh, mm-hmm. If you are someone that wants to hear about the experience and have the enrichment of knowing what they were thinking, what was going through their heads. So you'll know the results, but you'll have added context to it. Keep listening. If you're like, hey, I want to see it fresh and then hear their thoughts on what went down. Pause, time out, and then come back and join us next week. And you'll have it available to you before episode 103 drops. So that's our promise to you. Yeah, and I think it's good to know also like the front nine is going to be dropping on Robbie's channel per usual. And we've been teasing it for a while. The back nine will actually be dropping on the In the Bag uh, YouTube channel, which we just, again, we're starting. We're going to post extra content there, reels, things like that. This will be the first version of something like that. So excited. Um, there'll be many more. Uh, and then, you know, probably the week following, we're going to uh, we're gonna kind of, throughout the month of May, wean off um, the, like, the main podcast channel over to the In the Bag YouTube channel. And by June 1, we're going to be completely off of the Foundation podcast channel. So really important that um, we get all your support over there. Uh, again, we're going to link it below. Make sure you go over, subscribe. Um, make sure you like everything's over there. The faster we get that spun up, the more content we can, more time we can take to put content over there. So For sure. we appreciate you. I just want to caveat yeah. that, Robbie. Yeah, no, I think that's important. So we did a four disc draft battle. So I picked the four or we did a nine disc draft battle, four discs in each slot. And I picked the discs that were in the different pools. And I picked the location or did we kind of 
like you chose a location okay. yeah, at the end you it chose was a location secret. you'd already written it down and put it underneath your ipad that day. yeah that way we didn't know but you knew okay okay so uh spoiler shield spoiler shield flashing now this is your last chance um uh, because the round has happened and i uh while we're chatting jason can you text me the scorecard just so it's I, in your text already the man is too good here we go uh so i didn't text you because you can ask sex yeah. yeah you dis so i got it i got it okay uh so we're gonna talk through kind of what happened uh and some thought processes i was thinking through some questions wrote some questions out and wanted to kind of dive through it but uh let's start with an easy one heading into and i asked with you in the video uh how are you feeling heading into this challenge one in one how are you feeling about your bags like just give us your thoughts heading in okay i'll, I'll jump in jason went first on the video i'll jump in first here for uh the audio so going into the round i felt really good um i came off a really solid round at hideaway um the week prior and i was throwing really well i feel like my releases were really good i feel like i was like pretty smooth and i was hitting gaps and things so uh peaks longs i think can be deceptively hard but in my mind it's always probably easier than it is i think um but you do have to hit some gaps you do have to make sure you have some shapes so but that didn't really worry me i was pretty confident there um I, we robbie asked us kind of like our upper third middle third lower third um so i think i said my upper third was like i think i said five under which i've shot there before at longs uh, middle i think i said like two three under maybe robbie and i you'll have to watch the video and then lower third i think i said like even one over that's where i thought like kind of my spread was going to be uh, but I, I felt pretty good i felt pretty good with my bag i felt like i had most of everything i needed and there's a couple discs i could like lean on if i really needed to for that course cool yeah i i I was feeling okay. I've I've been up and down. We had to set that same weekly last week. I was everything was slightly off. That's how I described it. I literally like everything was slightly to the right or slightly to the left, and I chained out. I felt like eight times that day. Most of those were bad putts. I had one pure Gannon chain out in the hut, and so but I shot nine over. It was a really bad round, the worst round I've ever shot at Hideaway. So like when you shoot that blast that bad in your last round, you're like okay. I've only played Peach View Longs a couple of times. It is very similar to Shorts for those who played both. There's just a couple of them are a little bit longer and a little harder, as we'll talk about. And so I was I was actually thinking I could go blow up really bad here because I know that I have done that on Peach View Longs before. But with the disc I drafted, a couple of were already in my bag, so it made it easier. I mean, full disclosure definitely made it easier. Um, so I had that confident in some of the shorter things that I was very confident in. I think my my top third, I, th I said one under to three under uh, or – maybe one or three or maybe even to three under. And then my bot, my middle was even to two over. And then my lower third was three over and higher. And so, uh, my goal was to shoot even like in my own, my own personal goals. If I can shoot even, I've had a great round. If I'm in my middle third, I'm very happy. But if I shoot even, I have a great round. So, yeah. And I think I, and I missed that part of mine, Jason, I think I said my goal was like two or three under. So I really wanted to shoot. Cause I thought that would give me room for some error like there's a lot of like pars out there but there was a there's several birdies i could kind of attack i thought at least yeah so pc logs is interesting especially for lots of fans of the foundation content you're going to know peaks view shorts because i feel like they play peaks view shorts quite often uh for the content so peaks view for those of you who uh maybe you're not like so deep into the content i know uh i've described i have conversation with people before like oh yeah you know that course because it looks like or, and i've said the name of the course and they're like i which video oh, like what course is that peaks view is where a hole one you're like throwing down uh, a hill and the basket is tucked the short is tucked just b like below a tree you kind of got to hit a gap there's a walking path to the right uh the guys film a lot of beginner challenges there all sorts of things the long basket's a little further uh, what's interesting to me about Peaks View shorts versus longs is Peaks View shorts, almost every hole on that course is birdieable. 17 is probably one of the hardest birdies to get for, for the shorts. It is arguably an easier, when you play to the longs, yeah. it's arguably easier. The ceiling's still there. There's more OB, things like that. But going into this thinking from i know i've i talk a lot about attack hole strategy and choosing where you want to where you want to hit peaks view longs a lot of the 
holes that are out of the open, which are traditionally some of the easier birdies at PCU Shorts, become significantly more difficult because of low ceilings. And there's a, there are so many holes, I feel like, that you have to clear a low ceiling right. that is 250, 300 feet away from you in order to get close to the basket to have a putt. But the wood holes are not that much more difficult. A couple of them are. Lots of them are similar in difficulty of getting to the basket. Uh, so, gentlemen, how does it feel knowing that the open golf, like, because you've both played PC shorts quite a bit. So talk about that that feeling of knowing the only attack holes are going to be wooded hole options for me. What's kind of your thought process striking the course there for scoring? I, th I think what you kind of said it in the woods, it's really interesting because the long baskets are typically like, you kind of throw the same shot, I guess, direction shot as the short basket, but it's maybe like all a little farther to the left or a little farther to the right. So it's like it, they're not necessarily harder, I guess, but you have to really have discs or know the or be able to throw the shape that like, oh, okay, I need to throw this straight thing on a rope that fades or that turns to the right at the end. So I think that's the difficult part about that. Um, I felt I felt okay going in the woods. I think I under I underestimated a little bit on the open, the open holes. Like I knew hole one was I can't get a birdie there. I knew hole two I couldn't get a birdie. I knew four I probably couldn't. I knew five I couldn't, and I knew six. So I think that's really tough. Like putting, be, and also it's not like easy pars necessarily easy yeah. either. Yeah. In the, on those first six holes, yeah. so not only do you, can you not really birdie, you have to like pay attention that you don't mess up to yeah. get bogeys because they're easy bogeys. And they're not necessarily easy pars. A few of them, like hole two, is not an easy par, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Like it's it's so Robbie ca encapsulate right as did Ro as did Brad because when you play Peaks few shorts normally, it's like oh I can birdie one, I can birdie two, three, I can birdie shorts and longs. Four, I usually don't birdie, but most people birdie it because it's a forehand hold. I'm working on my forehand, and then when you go up to that other one, there's no chance of me birdie. Like I have no chance of birdieing one. None. Not even a perfect shot. Par is hard because if you don't make that first gap, you got to make a touchy up shot to even get the par. Um, hole two, birdieable for people who have unique shots because it's right over a path that's OB and then it's woods right beside it. I don't have that shot for a birdie, so I have no shot at birdie. And a death putt. And a death putt, right? Because I actually had a 35 footer and I was like, but it's a death putt. I'm like, I'm a spoiler, I laid up on hole two because, because I was within putting range on the other side of the OB, but it's pure woods downhill behind it. So unless you make a better shot hole four is the same way is so pushing in such a low ceiling like robbie talked about it's it's not tough i don't have distance so there's enough courses i walk up to a hole and think i have no shot at birding and uh, i sometimes don't have shot at parring and it's it's hard to think that's well that's the five of the first six holes or that on this and so you're trying to survive and that was in my mind i'm just trying to survive these first holes until we get in the woods knowing because we play shorts enough that a lot of the baskets are really close to each other like it's just slightly different shot for a few of the holes so but uh, it's i like the challenge of it. I'll, i play disc golf for fun so i want to shoot under par but every once in a while i like being kind of crunchy and grindy and just see hey can i grind this out to do something okay i think i think the error i made thinking back to it is I really underestimated the low ceilings on this entire course. Well, really the, it's really the open holes, like yeah. the first six, like to get a shot close enough to birdie or even an easy par, you have to like keep your disc pretty low to the ground. Yeah. Even 17 and eight, I mean, 18 because of the tunnel and the trees, it's not super low, but you have some lowness. Mm -hmm. so the open shots are a lot harder than you would think they'd be being an open shot. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm like trying to look through the wooded section versus, so if we like, so open holes, Brad was four over par through the open holes and Jason through the open holes, you were even. even. Yeah. Even, yeah. So that right there and Jason ends up taking the dub by five strokes. So the open holes really did were a major difference maker uh, because then we also look at like the wooded holes. Jason ends up two over. Yeah, two over in the woods and Brad ends up three over in the woods. So the woods became a much tighter battle uh, and there's there's kind of a, 
a storyline on a couple of Brad's. There, there is an underlying like looking at how several of the bogeys happen for you, Brad. Mm -hmm. I have an easy answer uh, on them, but one thing I want to talk about, and uh, as we were discussing last night, so the Swanky uh, disc golf guys were up here a week ago, two weeks, two weeks ago? ago, two weeks ago, probably. Yeah. Now. So yeah. yeah, when they were up here. Uh, they had the chance to stay with Jason, uh, and Elizabeth, his wife was telling us a story last night about how she was like, oh, they started talking disc golf and I decided to jump. I had something to contribute. So she could, she started saying like talking about upper middle and lower thirds. And they just kind of looked at her like, huh? <laughs> well, and it's something that we talk about a lot on this channel, just because I think for amateurs, people look at the rating as a way to process the round. But the reason I like using the thirds is because often if our understanding of where our thirds are at are off, it can lead to an insane amount of frustration in how we approach the game, especially how Jason mentioned like, sometimes you want to feel grindy right like you want to have that scoring but if your upper middle and lower thirds are off lots of courses that may if you're if those are too high let's say courses that are going to be grindy for you can feel even more challenging because you might think oh i should be able to like just crush this course like i can shoot under par in my middle third here but reality it might actually to shoot under par require your upper thirds to be a part of it Peaks, Peaks you being a great example. If y'all walked in and one of you was like, yeah, my middle third, I'm like five down. Because uh, really, it's not too much more difficult than the shorts. We would have, there would have been some shock yesterday. Uh, so thinking about thirds, upper, middle, and lower, what would you say for both of you? Start with your lower third. What part of your game was in your lower third? And was there anything in your upper to middle that you felt like helped out your game? I'll, I'll hit you first, Jason. You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. I know what your answers are. <laughs> so, um, I would say my drives were my middle third. So when I talk about middle thirds, I'm very much, I'm going to have some great shots. I'm going to have some bad shots. I'm going to have some, okay, I hit the fairway shots. There was, it was for sure about that. I had a couple on one particular hole when I threw the shaman and I don't even like, the shaman sorry connor yeah. i don't even like the shaman and i like i was like okay i'm okay and i walked up and i was six feet from the basket i'm like whatever disc golf is weird right um and so that's that's a great shot that i wasn't expecting to make and then i hit it i think i hit first available off three t's yesterday like that's that's definitely lower third because i usually don't hit first available on an easier course i may not make a great shot but then i hit first available three times and so but but so that's what i call my middle third for yesterday my up shots were middle to lower. I didn't have any great upshot yesterday. And I, and I, because I have no distance in my arm, I tried to be better at approach shots. Better's, I'm putting quotes better, right? I'm still an average player, but I, I'm confident. I'm almost always confident in my upshots. If I get to a certain spot, oh, I can get it within 10 feet with, with these discs. I think I hit a few more trees than I really wanted to yesterday. And that's been consistent between the, the, week, the weekly last week. Two weeks ago, we did a tournament at New London Longs, and my short game was terrible. My, it, was, it was just not where I – it was lower than what I was wanted to be. And then putting, for sure, was my upper third because I hit a lot of good putts. I was – Confidence breeds confidence, and hitting a putt breeds confidence. I did have a couple of shanks. That was my old putting style. And as soon as I let go, and I was like, oh, that's my old putt. Heiser putt, missed the basket by, you know, 10 feet. But there, I would definitely putted really well yesterday. I, I replicated Brad's putting from Hideaway last week. When at the weekly, Brad hit literally every putt he stepped up to, whether it was 30 feet or in. And that's the way I felt and did. I missed one long one, and I missed a short 10-footer while I was squatted. But that was definitely the the best the best putting round top to bottom I've ever had because I wasn't throwing great had a few close shots but um I was hitting putts yesterday so it was definitely upper third for putting my drives I would love to say they're lower third but it was middle third because I had some good drives I had some, some normal drives and I had a couple bad drives and then my my up shot was middle to lower I didn't make any amazing maybe one or two amazing up shots but it was I had more hit another tree in front of me as well it was a whole six or whole seven. I hit first available, and then I literally hit the tree that's almost right in front of me again, even though I had a wide open fairway to go. So those are my three. What about you, Brad? 
Well, I think um, you kind of alluded to it. My bottom third yesterday, which I think is what killed me, was my putting. I could not hit a putt to save my life. And that's atypical. I finally got my putt back, like Jason said, at Hideaway. Like, that's like, I felt like my old putting self again. Jason's seen me play for a long time. Like, I'm usually, I used to be a pretty solid putter. That was probably one of my strengths of my game. And like, for a year, I kind of lost it. And then I got it back recently, which just felt great. And I just, I cannot putt to save my life yesterday. And Robbie, even like jokingly off camera, was like, hey, switch to the pole cat at some point. And I just didn't. I probably should have. Um, because it like the I was putting with the inner core and it just wasn't working. And the inner core is a great disc. I threw it really well yesterday off the tee. Yes. Um, it was like I leaned on it pretty heavy on a lot of shots, but I could not putt. There's something about it that just like messes with my putt, and I don't know what it is. So my putting was definitely my <clears throat> my lower third. Uh I would say my middle third was probably like off the tee. I feel like it did a pretty okay. Like I don't um it was probably like a, a, if i can say a higher middle third maybe you would all agree yeah. like i don't know that i would say it was like up in my upper third but it was definitely not like bad like it was just pretty okay just all around uh had some really solid shots um had some like pretty okay shots i don't know that had like any really bad shots i'm trying to think if i had any really you bad didn't shots. hit any i don't think you hit any first available like no, I didn't, no. at all yesterday so no i had a couple i think the drive on really, 17 is literally the only one that i'm yeah, thinking yeah was like, ob yeah. yeah yeah and that was just that was not even that was just a bad just bad disc selection yeah. for what i was trying to do not bad disc bad disc selection for like what i knew i was gonna my error was gonna be right yeah um i don't know i don't feel comfortable saying i had anything in my upper third yesterday i mean uh, my my approach shots saved me a few times, but I feel like that's pretty consistent with my normal approach shots. Yeah, from from my from my assessment, I think that I I agree with Jason and putting was definitely upper third. Yes, drives middle middle yeah middle two. It was it was so interesting because approaches and like approaches and drives for both of them were like middle like middle thirds but you had brad was drives or approaches middle to upper and then you had jason with approaches middle to lower because there were some decent approaches but several times approaches were in a struggle right uh but jason's putting was definite upper thirds and brad's putting was definite lower thirds and so they didn't really necessarily like it was because jason didn't really dip so low and brad did dip low but didn't dip so high i feel like that's why there was a bit of a disparity in the scoring some might say mm -hmm. um and when you can't putt the confidence leaks yeah. to everywhere else on the yeah. course because um, there's a stretch of holes that I definitely want to highlight because I think that they, they really were the turning point that I feel like the air got drawn out of the, the round for Brad, especially. And then like from there, it was the air got drawn out. Jason's confidence was at a crazy high. And then there was a little motion for Brad to get back in and then the door got shut again so uh let's talk about uh let's see can i can i highlight one thing yeah. also yeah i think putting became super like super important yesterday because again the these long shots are like okay your par putt may be 25 30 feet if you threw a couple good shots so i think that's where you probably picked up a lot of strokes on me was uh I'm thinking like hole six, for example, like or hole seven. No, hole six. Hole six. Hole six, one where right you parked your up shot, and I had like a twenty-five footer. So yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and I, I threw. I I would say I threw a good drive, and I got pretty yeah. far. Yeah. Yeah. And you threw like you hit like, like a short. Yeah, yeah. Was but you short. and you then you cranked your A two like it's way past the biscuit, and then I was like, okay, well I'm you know I was like what probably sixty feet. 70 feet yeah oh yeah we'll, yeah. Call, it, we'll call it 75 feet so I, and i had like i mean i had a pretty open like chip forehand and i parked it. i was within maybe like five feet yeah 
And I was like, okay, great. I'm gaining a stroke on Jason going into the woods. I feel good. And then Jason, Jason's like wedged in between these trees, 25 plus long. And he just drains it just, and I, it again, took the air out of my sails. Cause yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm not beating him today. I think at that moment I was like, it's going to be a struggle to beat him today. Yeah. So that's, I want to talk about that stretch because the first couple of holes you have hole one, Jason plays a pretext book, knows he can't get the birdie. So he plays, uh, he does get, I will say this Jason had luck. two, this two moments on the course that were like, the course definitely, definitely, uh, gave him a stroke or two. Hey, you make your own luck. Hey, oh, yeah, I'm a hunter. You make your own luck. Here, here's the sidewalk. Here's the out of bounds. Here's Jason's disc. Literally. Yeah. I was in bounds. So he was touching grass. He, he it was fair. So there's a moment. Jason goes, he's in bounds. So he lays up, throws the bird, puts it under the basket. Brad has like a 20 footer, uh, to start off misses and so there we are like there's a stroke okay no worries bounce back great to hold two uh both par and both had like both had the opportunity of a i could be aggressive here and wisely like we talked about death putts roll away potential all that both yeah. wisely lay up sick hole three uh brad discovers that i've given him a really straight pole cat uh, which was interesting as well because I feel like Jason, did you go wizard off that? Wizard, team? yeah, it was wizard. Yeah, so they both threw shots that they wanted to fade, but they both threw them so straight that they just shoop, both sailed past the basket. Um, well, Brad sailed past the basket, so Jason yeah. gets a stroke on him there, and then we get to hole four. And I we will clarify, though, for those who watch, who know Peaks View, we did go for Peaks View short Correct. on yeah, three because we wanted the content to possibly get an eight. Yeah. We didn't go longs, and that may have changed stuff, but we all agreed let's do shorts for the chance we can get an eight. So we did play shorts on three for those who know Peaks View. For sure. If you got an ace potential, you got to go. So that's, I mean, I would acknowledge that birdie was like a bonus birdie. Yeah. I mean, Brad had the same shot, but that longer one is longer, is harder to get a birdie because it's surrounded by trees. So even I acknowledge, okay, that's a... While we both had the same shot at it, I would take that. That's a bonus birdie. A luck, not a luck birdie, but a bonus. I wasn't planning. I wasn't mentally thinking about, I'm going to get birdie on three because mm -hmm. three longs, not super hard. It's the easiest for that six hole stretch, but it's not as easy as shorts is. For sure. It's it's almost, it's like, I'm not going to say it's true poke and hope because the yeah. gap to the basket is pretty open, but it is 200 something feet down the fairway. So yeah. when you're trying to hit a gap that is the size of a door 200 feet down the fairway, does get a little of the, the air of poking and up. a lot of roll away potential yeah for, for sure for the long um so we get to hole four and i think hole four is where the narrative to me starts to get really interesting just even one thing i'm excited for y'all to like really experience is we're going to describe what happens here but when you can hear kind of the confidence shifting battle of how the words come out so hole four Let's go, Brad, walk us through your perspective on hole four, and then Jason, you walk us through your perspective on hole four. Okay. Okay, my perspective on hole four, I threw, a, I was attempting a particular shot, and I kind of shanked it. I had an early release, but it didn't put me in any real trouble. Just kind of put me left to the fairway. Uh, I was like, okay, well, I have a forehand approach. I threw a forehand approach. I was within, what, 10 feet? So I was like, feel pretty solid, because Jason threw his... You hit those trees on the left, right, to kind of push I'm, you down. Well, I think I threw it into the ground. So if I, either way, I was short. Yeah, I real short. He, yeah. yeah, I was seventy feet off the tee. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So. He threw his second shot first, and he threw it, and it from where I was, it looked pretty short. Like I thought it was like forty short, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm, and I even said, I'm getting a stroke on Jason right here. I'm, I'm back in it, and so I threw my upshot, and I got like ten feet, and I was like, okay, definitely got a stroke on him here, feeling good. We walk up to Jason's Berg, and it's like maybe 30 feet, maybe 28 feet. It's not yeah, it's nearly like, as far as I thought it was. Yeah, I, he, he's right. It's I don't think I hit a tree. I, I, I have sometimes the worst memory, but I was way short. Like, I came up with that hole with no one. I'm not going to birdie, but I'm like, oh, this is a very easy par hole. Just throw it straight. Yeah. Because the shorts is slightly to the right, which requires a forehand, and I usually hit the tree. And so I'm like, okay, just throw it straight. And I think I had an early lease and just went into the ground. 
And then Brad's right. He got there. He cleared the trees to the left, so he had an easier up and down. Because you have the geez, he Brad has a great forehand approach, forehand, and so from where I was at, I was like, okay, I'm still a hundred and something out. And I was even debating about what I was going to throw, whether it was going to be the Wizard or the Berg. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go with the Berg because I can keep it low. I, I sometimes release the Wizard a little high, and there was still a little bit of a ceiling. And it was when it landed, I Brad said, okay, I'm going to get a stroke here. And I was like, okay, maybe. I don't know. We're about to find out. Did you think it was as far as I did or no? I thought it was about 25 to 30 feet away. Okay. I thought it was way farther. So that's why I saw that. Well, so I think that's why I was surprised you said I'm like, it's not a, okay. I was like, Brad has no confidence in my putting. Now, in his defense, he watched me play Hideaway last week, so... He's actually speaking the truth at this point. Like I, I cannot. It's the more we talk about this, Brad. It's funny how flipped it was. Because how do I? Brad was throwing good, but not great. Your throws were not upper third, but his pit putting was upper third for Brad. Because literally, he had hit everything pretty much. And that's almost the reverse for this. Because like, and and your putting was slightly off. And at Hideaway, I hit chains. I'm not kidding. Of the 20 holes, I hit chains. I think 10 times and didn't go in. Mm -hmm. Most of those were off chains. But like, it's funny to think about how different, how swapped those rounds are. Yeah. But yeah, Brad said, I'm going to get a stroke. He's not wrong with that statement, again, based on how we just played a week ago. And I get up and hit a putt, and I, and it, for those who play a lot, sometimes your putt just feels good. Like, it's the first time I really had to putt, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's feel, it felt good. Like, everything came out the way it's supposed to. And so, yeah, so I did not lose the stroke yeah. in that hole. Yeah, he made it, and you'll, you'll see in there, I think Robbie zoomed in on my face. I was just in shock, and I think I knew at that point I'm in trouble. Because I know my putt's not going to feel great. That missing that putt on the first hole messed with my head. Yeah, I'm sure. For sure, it, I'm sure. I, it it would have done for me as well. Like, oh my gosh! I like for me to be like, holy crap! I'm still in my face from last week. If I'd have missed a putt like that, because so. I don't even if I miss putts, I don't like air ball very much. And I don't think I. I think I still hit chains on the right side, like yeah. kissed them. Yeah. But I was like, oh man, that was like almost an air ball. I'm like, and I. This is probably bad, but I'm like. I'm not changing my putt today and risking of changing my putt and messing with my normal game today. So I'm just going to try to adjust and just try my best. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I, that is, that's the kind of putt, especially where Brad on hole one, like the miss that happened is that's the, we're playing a two round tournament. We get back to tournament central and the MA4 player is walking up to me telling me that he had four spit outs and he's counting one of those as a spit out when it's like it hit right side chains it hit chains yeah but it wasn't a spit it was out. it was never going in the basket ever yeah. for any like, reason if it Not caught if there was a fire that would have been incredible uh like great basket if it catches uh this catcher it's in but it was a prodigy so hard push out of the basket okay so important the important details of like inspecting that is brad saying hey I'm going to get a stroke. And he even, he was like, or if I just throw this, this razor claw in, I get two strokes. Uh, and then he doesn't get either stroke. And I love that was, I was wondering if he was like, Oh no, I'm in trouble because that definitely showed up on the next hole. So now we go to hole five and I'll fast forward you to the green. They both throw drives and Jason on the box says, who birdies this hole grabs a buzz SS rips it down the middle one of the most beautiful shots that I've yeah. ever seen of all the videos that have been made at Peaks View Longs, probably the most beautiful shot that I've ever seen, pures it and ends up mid circle two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Brad throws similar shot, also beautiful, throwing a J. J and it pushes and then fades out. So he's about 20, 25 further out than Jason is. And I even think I was like, I don't know if you're circle two or like just outside circle two, yeah. but Brad's got to look at the basket, can see Jason's a little bit in front of him. Play out the, let's play out the perspectives for there. Brad, you, you go first. Well, I'm in a position where I'm like, I don't have, and I think I said in the video, I don't really have a jump putt. It's probably something I should maybe work on a little bit. Um, and so I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to try for this because I had re really no super real danger other than like it might roll back to me a little bit. So I tried, I did the jumper. I hit metal, I think, on that jumper. And it just, it, the sad part is I hit the jumper, it, I hit the metal, rolled back probably another, what, 20 feet or something like that. Yeah. So that was a little unfortunate. Um, and then I, based on what Jason already did, I'm like, okay, well, I'm in trouble because he's going to sink this one probably. I didn't, spoiler, I did not. I had, The confidence hadn't quite got there yet. Not that I would have sunk it, let's be clear, because it's still like middle of circle two. 
but I also did a jump putt and it was a little bit of my old putt that came out of that, but I was close enough to make a 10 footer or something after that. So I didn't, the confidence went in my head and, and so I got there thinking, and I think that my jumper is not that great either, but I'm okay doing a jumper because sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not and it hazard out. Um, but I, after that, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to get my par and be good to go with it. Yeah. And spoiler is just a 20 footer and I hit chains on the right and did not make that putt as well. Yeah. And there was a, uh, because part of this, Jason and I got to the chance. I, I stay at Jason's house when I come into town. So part of this, I reflected out loud, trying to process for today. Uh, and I was like, there was a comment that Brad made on that hole. And I'm sure it was a joke, but I don't know if you remember making this comment, no. but Jason also remembered it. So, uh, it like, it stuck out as a, oh, I think this is really where Brad, the mental, it started to show like, you could see that it wasn't, that you felt it was slipping away already. Mm -hmm. So much so that when that roll away, like you hit the cage and it rolls out and then Jason is like approaching his putt and you said am i still out asking jason were you still yeah. out even though you were you were clearly you were yeah. in circle one but i think that you was a, it was a joke half joke half frustration yeah that you had that roll away right they like there's no way i'm gonna roll away 25 yeah. feet yeah um but you did it was it, you probably didn't realize it, but you said it and i was like no, Brad, you're not, I don't think I said anything. I was like, I was still out of circle one, yeah. but that's well, the frustration at that moment. Yeah, because I, I saw it hit and roll, and I just didn't even look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, great, here we go. Yeah. But yeah, you're right, because like, I was in that mentality of like, well, whatever the worst thing's going to happen is going to happen right now to me, clearly. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is which is a place that if you guys play disc golf long enough, you'll get there on a course. Yes. We're going to play Heritage today, uh, <laughs> and if those of you who watch uh, Foundation content, like... That is the course that for course conquest they had to play five times, four times, four times, uh, four times to try to beat. Uh, I guess do we count it as five times considering they literally restarted? I think it's four counting this. Four counting it. Well, it's four videos. Four. Yeah, you're right. So maybe five. Yeah, yeah it was more than one. But they yeah, they, they right. attempted they it quite a few times. Four times. And I have a yeah. feeling that several of us are going to get halfway through this round and be like, "Of of course, I kicked yeah. 75 feet to the left. Like that's <laughs> that's what happens out here." So we all get to that dark place. But it was it was interesting. And so from my perspective, from the content perspective of also our podcast, right? We're helping beginners. We're focused on beginners. There is this uh, shift of okay, I want to see how Brad bounces back here because it's definitely not like over at this point. Jason has three strokes on him coming out of this, but we all know there is so much golf left to play. We've only played five holes at this point. Three strokes is nothing, especially playing longs here. So we head into six. Brad throws an objectively better drive than Jason. Uh, and we kind of, this one, we kind of talked about of Brad throws a better drive. Jason juices the upshot long. And if I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I'm getting a stroke on Jason here. Like mm -hmm. I, so we heard kind of Brad's perspective on this. Jason, how are you feeling in this moment? You've just, Brad out drove you, out approached you. What's going through your head when you're walking? Because Brad and I kind of walked together and you kind of got over to your lie faster yeah. than us. What's going through your head on that walk? When I, when I honestly, when I saw Brad's shot, I'm like, great shot because of what you just said. It's easy to get frustrated and shank that shot because I've shanked that shot even though I've thrown a good shot. So I was like, that's an awesome shot because that's a shot I've seen Brad make like a thousand times because that forehand up shot with a putt approach, he's so good at it. And so I'm like, but honestly, I truly, I, I evoked Hunter and a killer. Man, I literally put a killer. It sounds silly, but I'm like, I'm going to make this putt, right? If I missed it, I missed it. It's I, I, That's the way I live. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make this putt and squash Brad's dreams for at least this hole. Um, and so, but I, I when he made that shot, that's the thought I had. Because before you made that up shot, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to make it. I'll take my, take my bogey. But when you had that, I'm like, all right. I mean, because you know, for those who know Hunter, when Hunter's in competitive mode, Hunter's a different Hunter than, than mm -hmm. you'll see, right? Yep. And for that moment, I'm like, I'm gonna play Hunter, turn that, turn that on, and see if I can do it. And then sometimes putts just feel good. It's weird, like 
Robbie will reference it in a second because one of my favorite things to say is when I'm playing well, I'll say disc golf is weird. Disc golf is so weird, whatever, mm-hmm. because I I go so insanely high and insanely low with my sh- with my scores. Had away nine over last week, and then and, and I don't think I've ever gone single digits at Peaks View Longs before. And so, um, but to get up there and hit that putt, and then the confidence went at that moment. The confidence went sky high because it wasn't a lucky putt; it was a pure putt, pure all the way right in. And I just mm-hmm. stood there for a second, like I, was, I think I even said like whatever, like mm-hmm. whatever. Disc golf is weird. <laughs> so he sinks the putt, and you can see like the reality for all of us of like oh. Once again, for now, three, two of the last three holes, Brad has been like, I'm getting a stroke on Jason. Mm -hmm. And then he does it. So we're heading into the woods and Jason's drive goes straight into a tree. I mean, to say that it was 40 feet off the tee feels generous. Yeah. Brad, what's going through your head? Because you throw your drive and it gets clear far away that we can't see what's kind of going through your head at this point well because jason had the tee box and he hit first available and immediately i'm like okay i'm getting two strokes back here that was my yeah my thought okay because i do like the overhand like the thumber play for the shorts there and i'm like i'm gonna do the thumber play lay it by the shorts pitch up to yep. the basket tap in for par jason's at least getting a bogey if he because he was like deep in the woods down on the left and I'm like, and I've been there a hundred times, so I know it's like very hard to get out of there. Um, and I'm like, I, I got to get to like, I'm like, I'm getting two strokes. Throw my thumber. Great. It's up there by the, uh, I think it hit a tree kind of early. So it didn't go right by the short basket, but it was pretty close to it. I had an open look to like kind of lay up at the long basket. And so, and I, I watched, so I'm ahead of Jason. I watched Jason throw a second shot. He hits a tree, no tree. and I'm like, I'm definitely getting two strokes here. Yeah. So he, he hits the tree and then he kind of like throws up by this stump. And I said, quote, you aren't going to like that. <laughs> I, and then I was like, okay, there's my two strokes right there. Cause you got to pitch over the stump, which is a death putt. I'm like, he's just going to lay up. There's, there's five. I'm getting a three. There's my two strokes. I'm back in the game. Well, he throws that up by the stump. You aren't going to like it. And then I like, I take a pole cat. Cause I'm like, this pole cat's very straight. And I just try to pitch it and like let it scoot up to the basket because it's like kind of on a downhill. And I like, I don't know whether I released it weird or what happened, but it like went right on me or no, it hit and then bounced right on me. Literally hit the stump and like hit Jason's disc and landed right beside it. And I was like, oh, aren't going to like that. And so we get up to that shot and Jason's like, all right, whatever Brad's doing, I'm doing it. Brad, if you run it, I'll run it. If you don't, if you lay up, I'm going to lay up. Whatever you do, I'll do it just for for uh, camaraderie's sake here. And I was like, because realistically, it's not that far of a putt. Right. It was like kind of like a pitch over the stump. And I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, I'm going to hit the front of the chains here and just kind of fall down. Um, well, that didn't happen. I, I believe I airballed that putt, if I'm correct. Yep. Probably, yeah. Something happened. I ended up on the down, like down over the hill. Yeah. So, and, yeah. yeah, you go down the hill. And he's far past it. And Jason is a fast player. No doubt. Like, Jason is a fast player. And especially, that's, I didn't realize, like, the, I, this is why I love these kind of things, is because hearing Jason go on hole six and be like, I'm going to put the hunter mentality on. I'm going to go kill her. And I'm going to hit this. Because then when you stepped up to that putt on seven, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> what happens, Jason? Well, I, because I had that killer mentality, like, well, let's step back to a little bit. Cause I walking up to that, my whole disc golf is weird, whatever. I literally said it can change on this hole. And my very next throw hits a tree. I'm like, just like that. And then my very next throw hits another tree. Just like that. My third throw was actually from where I was at. And the disc I had in my bag, a good upshot. I was very happy with that upshot. And when I saw it, where I was at, I was like, oh, I could make this putt again, the confidence sky high. And so that's why. Again, I, tr- I gave him a ship. I tried to talk Brad into it. Brad's a grown man. He's going to do what he wants, right? But I tried to talk him into running that putt because I knew it sounds very arrogant. Let's be clear. I know I'm being very arrogant, but like I had that, the confidence was here. Yeah. When the confidence is here, you're like, I'm going to hit everything. Yeah. And that's why I said, if you, if you run it, I'm running it. And I have no fear. If you want to lay up, I 100% will lay down. So if Brad had laid up, I absolutely would have laid up, taken my bogey or my double bogey th- or bogey at that time. 
Mm-hmm. been double bogey sort of laid up and hit it and then when brad missed it i'm like i'm making this like there's no doubt in my mind when i make it never missed center change dropped right in the basket yeah so so confidence gonna... is an amazing thing isn't a it's like a drug mm-hmm. when the confidence is there i'm like wow again i played so bad last week to have me up this high it was it was fantastic yeah so i ended up um so i ended up taking a double bogey and instead of gaining two strokes on jason i lost a stroke on jason yeah. So there's a three stroke swing in my mind that actually happened. Yeah. So for men- for mental sake, not great for that hole. Not great. Yeah. And that's that's where I I mean, really, it was like, okay, these next few holes are gonna have to go something interesting in order for Brad to really feel like, okay. He because you could you could see, you could feel it in the air, you could feel that moment. Um So my question is for Brad, do you feel like at this point in the game, you came into this trying to play more match play through the first seven holes versus scoring the first seven holes? Or was it like, because that was kind of my thought was maybe he's trying to match play this and it just got away from him because of that. I've got to beat him on this hole. I've got to beat him on this hole. And then the the mountain just kept building in front of you. Yeah, I think two things I probably did wrong. Um, number one, I was trying to do the strategy of like, because we had to use every disc in our bag off of the tee at least one time through the round. So by like the woods, I wanted to kind of have most of all of them done. So like I was just trying to cycle through all of those yep. the yep. best that I could. So. I don't know if that was the wrong play because it did help me at the end, I think. Uh, but I was 100% ma- match playing. And I think that's even hole one, if I really think about it. I was like, okay, when I like was one down already, I was like, shoot, I'm already behind on hole one. Because I was trying to match play. Because I I think I said it, I feel I felt pretty okay in the woods. Like I didn't, I felt like maybe that's where I could like maybe pull away if I was going to. Um, and I wanted to match play through the first, like basically the first nine as we're, learning our discs and everything yeah yeah it did get away from me because i think at that point probably hole seven i really doubted if i was i was like if i can if i come back it's only going to be because jason like gets bad luck on the course like gets rolls away roll aways tree hits like chain outs like that's how i'm going to win not because yeah i'm going to like beat him at this point it's going to be luck kind of yeah and that's that's where and it it where where it, the reality hit me was we got to hole ten so hole eight and nine they both par, uh, and it was it was interesting in the like so we get to nine and Brad has a death putt Jason was short went two over stable no uh, what did you throw on nine, nine was the berg and I was way short yeah because there's that it's the jump putt hole on shorts but it's much further down than I thought it was so I was way short and so. Jason lays up, Brad lays up because he has a death button. He was like, live to fight another day. Here we go. So then we go to 10. Yeah. I was like back, new back nine, new me. Yeah. You know, that's where I was trying to be. Yeah. And I immediately abandoned that and it was a mistake. So with 10, Brad has another death putt. Threw a great drive. Great drive. Theme of my round. Threw a great drive, but. Yeah. yeah. Threw a great drive. Jason also throws a great drive and was. Jason's 15 feet at most, 15 to 12. And so it's like, okay, Jason's also looking at a little bit of a death butt. uh, And by a little bit, I mean, he's looking at a death butt as well. A huge drop off behind the basket. And I think I actually asked on camera, Brad, is this one that you feel like you have to run because of where Jason is? I think you were like, yeah. Yeah, no, I did say yeah because I and I wasn't super. I was only twenty feet. I wasn't super far away. Yeah. No, you weren't super far away. And I had an open shot. Like, yes, it was death putt behind me. Probably any other day I would lay up, but I already knew I was so far behind. You were going to get a birdie. Like you had to really, you had to putt with your eyes closed to get it. You probably would have made it yesterday. You were putting that well. Um, so I'm like, I have to try. I have to try for this birdie so I don't get too far behind. Um, spoiler. I again. I'm saying air ball. I probably clipped the chains on the right, but I went down, I rolled down the hill and that was annoying. Uh, Recovered, came up the hill and had a tap in for a bogey, but still again, 
another two strokes. Yeah. That I, again, I think at that point, match play style, I felt pressure. So I had to just like try. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, uh, and from there, I want, we'll let people continue to watch because this, this video, that moment is the first putting green moment for the video that's on the, uh, in the bag channel. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want that y'all can kind of watch it play out from there. So now I want to, I want to zoom out, right? We've gone really deep because yeah, we'll tease. Yeah. I made a, I made a b bit of a push for sure. For sure. I think, and that's, it. even, I think it happened on, I want to say it was 12 or 13 where we were like, hey, let's just birdie out. Because uh, that was even said on the card of like, what if we birdie out? Uh, and that's where I think, Brad, you were like, well, I'm going to birdie out. I hope Jason does it. And then yeah. there was a great little uh, pain of the camera back and forth moment. So uh, going through this, reflecting back, I, these those were the powerful moments that I felt like it really would enrich your viewing experience for people to be able to be brought into kind of that, that mentality. So uh, we've done three bag drafts. I want to go to Jason first. Did you feel more, less, no difference in pressure of having your bag drafted for you in playing versus drafting your own bag and playing what was like did you feel any pressure difference there of was there almost like even like a write-off of oh well, i didn't pick these discs so whatever no i don't i don't think so i think it was the pressure i put on myself was because i don't think i drafted great i drafted true to self because in hindsight if you look at our bags Br brad drafted pretty much stable to overstable i drafted neutral to understable because that's how we play a lot of our disc and i think in hindsight, as we came up there, like, I don't really, this is my normal bag, but like if I, you need the stability of disc, you need some of those things that the functionality of that. And so I think I had more pressure because I, well, I th I'll say, but I think I had more pressure on me because I drafted it because it was relying on me for picking the disc. And I think I did good. Some of the disc I love, like I used to throw the Berg and I love the Berg. So it's, it's in the bag now and it's not leaving. I used to, I'd never thrown the wizard, but it's definitely staying in the bag. The F7 could come and go, the insanity come and go, um, but I guess I guess now that I say that out loud, it was definitely more pressure on me. It's easier if someone else does it. I don't blame them if I play bad, but at least, hey, I get to try something else. But this one, I actually had to put thought into it and choose those things. The disc that's in my bag that's going to stay there forever, or not forever for a while, is the Crave. I threw it once, hit a tree. So I only threw the Crave once yesterday. It, but I, that's a my, my now that I'm picking up a forehand, it's my forehand disc. But the one throw I did yesterday, I hit a tree, and I like that's the only throw I did that Crave the entire time. So in hindsight. It's funny that that disc I like so much now, but in that round yesterday, I threw it once and it was a bad throw. Me, not the disc. But I'd say more pressure in hindsight because I controlled my own destiny on that, whereas other people choose it for me. It's almost fun. I can see what I can do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm processing. Yeah, well, I think for me, I think we do best of five. You Let us know in the comments. Um, I would like to have my bag drafted for me because I think I make bad decisions for myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. If I'm being honest. Um, I don't think I chose. I think what I chose was fine. Like it wasn't like it like hindered. I've just played bad yesterday. Um, but I would be curious, like Robbie, if you bat, dr bat, uh, drafted a bag for me, I'd be curious, curious if Jason drafted a bag for me non spitefully. <laughs> I would not draft it spitefully. And I would just be curious to see like what that looks like because I think I think we all think we know our game, but I think those that play with us or see us play probably know it better. Yeah. Because they don't have the uh, the pride aspect or the oh I like to throw this because it's cool or I think this is best for me. Yeah. Mentality. They can like look at it through like a a, a filter, if you will, on what uh, reality actually is. Yeah. Yeah. And there there is a moment right where we there are discs that we try to that we try to push. That were like, oh yeah, this this is fantastic. This is incredible. And those who play with you were looking at it, going, "I do not think this means what you think it means. Uh, I, I do not think that that is actually a great disc for you. You achieve okay results with it, but why are you why are you as comfortable with that? If you are as comfortable with that disc as you think you are, it probably should be going better for you more often. So I yeah, there there's curiosity there." Um, 
Brad, walking into this, my my question for you is because I don't live here, so we we obviously spend a lot of time digitally, mm-hmm. but for the two performances that I've been there filming, obviously not ideal for you, not going how you wanted them to. The one that I wasn't there, and it was the the guys were with you, um, and they were a part of it. Do you think that there is any world of me being there has an adjustment to your game of like I wonder, like in any form or fashion, positive, negative? Um, mm-hmm. Do you think that you play different because I'm there? For any particular reason, I don't think it's like a nerves thing or anything like that, but are there any thoughts there? I don't know. I think other than I, I put a little, I think a little extra pressure on myself to play in my upper third around you because I, again, the only real experience at this point is you like seeing me play pretty terribly, I would argue. Um, So I think there's like a little pressure of like, hey, Robbie, I want you, I want you to see like, I actually can. (laughs) play good disc golf you know i actually am okay at it and i think maybe there's just some i think in the bag draft battles maybe there's a little pressure because like um i want to have our fans feel like i give them good advice or i throw well for them Mm. i think there's some of that probably um and i just need to play you know because when i play i have a good time and i play pretty decent for like my skill level so i think i put a lot of pressure on myself to perform and i think that's fine. I usually do okay with that. But then when things start sliding, I have a lot of trouble recovering, I guess. And I'm, I also have this toxic trait of like, and it's where Jason was asking me to run or lay up. Like when I'm on camera, I would, I think I make decisions I would not normally make, but I just, I'm trying to have fun, but then I'm actually just making it the round worse for myself. So I really don't think it's you. I think it's me putting pressure on myself to perform a certain, a certain caliber I guess when we do these things. Yeah. And I, I think that's completely fair as someone who obviously makes content quite a bit. Mm-hmm. It's there is a, there's extra pressure that comes on camera when you, with, if you give advice on the internet, mm-hmm. your performance is judged like right. wholeheartedly. Your performance is judged. Um, whether that's good or bad, probably mostly bad. Uh, but, yeah, especially because I, what I do appreciate is I think that that pressure for you, Brad, will alleviate the more that you continue to do these I'm um, testing lives uh, and yeah. like bringing people in and showing those throws off because at the end of the day, people will know like, okay, you're you're throwing this way, things like that. Like, mm-hmm. not that there's any need to fabricate any information anyways, like that would not help us on this show at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just getting more comfortable throwing a camera over and over again for mm-hmm. our audience already should alleviate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not too worried about it. It'll, it'll come with time. And I, I'm just, I think the, the positives are like, I, I think there's a lot of positives that happen again. I threw, I think my off the tee is getting pretty decent. Like, and I felt pretty confident, even though I wasn't playing like putting super well. Um, I feel like a little better on my drives. I feel like I'm like slowing down. I feel like my full form is slowly getting better. So it's cool because everybody can watch that, you know, and hopefully, hopefully what everybody sees is like, hopefully everybody's game is just like, you can find some inspiration like, oh, well, I throw that shot better or like, hey, I do this pretty well. And, you know, Brad has a podcast and he doesn't throw that as well as I do. Hopefully you can find some like comfort and some inspiration and some like, you know, confidence in your game by watching me be a goofball and like throw bad shots and throw some good shots too. And, um, I'm here for that. That's what I'm here for. Oh. I like that. I li- we like being transparent, and that's probably as transparent as we can get. Okay. Well, to wrap it up, y'all, it's been a good episode. I want to say thanks again to Jason for coming on. Uh, Brad gave an idea of someone drafting for him. Jason, I'm going to put you on the spot here. If this goes to a best of five, fourth installment for the draft – what would be, do you have an idea on how we would draft differently? What challenge would be put on the draft? Whatever it may be. Anything coming to mind right off the bat? Well, um, I would say one of the challenge would be 
we draft each other's bag because I've only drafted my bag. And I think, I think I remember, you may have drafted my bag or Robbie's done it each time, but I could draft Brad's unspitefully, as you said. Mm-hmm. And then he would draft mine, but maybe it's not. The tough thing we have, and this is the reality if you watch it, like if we don't want to draft too many discs because none of our films will ever capture us throwing all those discs, right? I, I hit the nail on the head. I threw through Crave once. So, I, so no one really got a feel for the Crave. Mm-hmm. So if I'd say it would be like a, a five disc bag or something like that. Yeah. And maybe going, maybe doing nine holes at, at Fallen Creek Yellows or something, because some of those are scorable, which you're going to watch a lot of throws, but, and we, something like that, a, a course where we're playing six to eight holes, but that it has enough of diversity, really long holes and shorter birdie bowl holes with a, with a, with a mid range, something like that. So it, it gives it more open. So a lot, a lot less technical shots, yeah. but lets you get out there and really throw the disc. Whereas this one, other than 17, there's no hole where we really bomb it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a hard hole because it's uphill, the tee box is slanted, all those things. I'm not a long thrower, but I still like to throw hard sometimes, you know? So that's that'd be my thought of a future one is something like that. We're more than one hole. We get to really rip it and just see what happens. Yeah. As far as how we draft, I don't know. You know, maybe let, give us some ideas in yeah. the comments. Yeah. We would appreciate that. Well, uh, Brad, Jason, we got a new disc in the warehouse this week oh yeah we got a lot um so we have uh heck yeah uh mvp hitting the site so custom stamp mvp we have echoes we have rhythm fission rhythms and we have glitch uh the heck yes stamp previously only available on rocks in the connor box we brought them over to mvp they had some availability we're just trying to get as much mvp as we can great disc fun to throw um so we're excited about those uh, we also have Glide is a lie, Bergs. Jason threw the Berg all over my face yesterday. So um, make sure he's putting one in his bag. Make sure you put one in yours if you're a Berg thrower. If not, maybe give it a try. Great thing is we have Foundation Care now. All of our U.S. customers, maybe you're like, hey, I've always wanted to try a Berg, but I don't want to be that guy. Hey, get it, uh, buy one on the site. Have it shipped to your house. Try it out. You can try it out for up to 30 days. If you don't like it, you can fill out a form online. It, that gets you in touch with Jason, and then we'll get you swapped out uh for something that you really love so very easy decision there um what else am i forgetting jason we had that drop that dropped today as of recording but this was coming out tomorrow on friday we had fractal prodigy so we had the a2 not the a2 the pa3 and the and the a2 yeah yeah in fractal which feels like i'm not a big prodigy guy though the a3 surprised me like i've always thought it felt terrible but i was very happy with how it threw like when i juiced it on hole six i threw it great i just juiced it too much so mm-hmm. that's on there mx2 feels amazing we were talking yeah. before we came on air i need a more stable mid-range it's not a beefy mid-range like a pyro or something the mx2 may be that disc for sure um we have the other stuff we have some random mvp that's kind of going up as we go along as well like orbitals, watts, we have quite a bit. Oh, um, Robbie's did. Yep. Right. We have a, a, a small amount of Robbie C. Pigs and Robbie C. Uh, Birdie Blend Wizard. So I know people have been asking about those. They're going up. There's a handful of them, so make sure you just grab them while you're thinking about it. Pause this. Go get them. Come back. Uh, we also have, I don't have mine on. Uh, on yeah, I, don't, I don't have mine on either. Sorry. Uh, so our, it. Uh, we're, they're called, we're calling them foundation, uh, like, college hats college hat. they're like a they're a blend between like a flat bill and like a dad hat they're super comfortable you've seen them in the videos you all have been asking about them they are live on the site right now uh make sure you check those out um oh yeah green. connor said granddad hat i think that may the, not be the best selling pitch connor though it does i do like it hey i i love i love <laughs> hey, who doesn't love that grandpa you know yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. okay uh, and then if you pre-ordered swarms they're getting shipped out but we'll have some swarms going up as well and there's a handful of like uh anthony barella commemorative swirl venoms and literally just very few um drones help me out here champions, 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 cup. champions cup drone the previously uh, wooded major yep so those will be up as well we had a big week week for drops this week um I'm also forgetting about one other item and I can't think about it. I think it was Prodigy I'm thinking of that you said already. So yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff. Make sure again, recently restocked is your best friend. Make sure you check it out, foundation foundationdisc.com. Hey, if you get it, you like it, it's not good and you're not putting your bag. Foundation care, remember that. Don't be afraid to try something. Try it out for 30 days. If you don't love it, contact us. We'll help you find something that you love. Um, but if it is good and you uh get it home, you throw it in the field, you go out and uh Bag draft challenge your buddy and he throws something all over your face. You know, make sure you pick up that as well. And if it's good, 
Keep it in the bag. Keep it in the bag. We'll see y'all next time.